Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is an update on the experiment I did a couple of videos, well, three or four videos back, uh, taking an N-fed uh, half-wave antenna using a 49 to 1 um, on, on the, the common design that's, that's really being used uh, quite a bit here lately, uh, and attempting to incorporate a built-in counterpoise using a piece of ladder line. If you go back and look at the video, you can uh, find out all about it. I, I'll even link it down in the description below. Uh, I've had some time to play with the antenna, and then recently I took the uh, ladder line out and turned it into just the regular old common end-fed half-wave uh, design uh, for comparison. And I wanted to see, you know, if I saw any difference in the amount of RF coming back down on the coax shield. Uh, before I get to that, on the original video there were quite a few comments, many of them very helpful, full of information. Um, Steve Ellington, uh, the guy who's been doing a lot of development work on that antenna here lately, even commented with a very helpful comment with lots and lots of useful information in it. So if you are playing around with those antennas, those N-fed half waves, uh, I would recommend going back to that video and looking through the comments. There's lots of really useful tips in there, and I thanks, uh, a thanks to um, all the guys that uh, provided those helpful and useful comments. Uh, there might be a few negative ones, too. I got beat up a little bit on uh, well, some other places about that video, but it was an experiment. That's all it was. Just I like to just build things with, a, with an idea and see what happens, and that's what I did. Now, uh, to the antenna. Taking the uh, ladder line off... Um, I did see a slight increase in the amount of RF on the coax, but not, not dramatically, just a little bit. With the uh, ladder line on there, uh, there was uh, just a little bit of a reduction, but that could just be to, due to the antenna being detuned a bit and being a little weird uh, with that configuration. You know, it, it might not actually be it providing the function that I wanted it to um, as a counterpoise to keep RF off the coax. So, kind of indeterminate there. I don't think that it really did um, help putting the uh, ladder line on there to build in a counterpoise. I don't think that it really helped much at all. So, as far as um, that experiment and hoping that it would create um, a certain effect, it's a fail. But as far as an experiment goes, it was a learning thing. So, you know, hey, I know a little bit more now. And uh, if you follow along, you might uh, might have learned a few things too. So uh, that's that. Um, the end-fed half wave, as I have it now, it's a f the fairly common configuration. It's a half a wavelength wire, in this case a half a wavelength on um, 80 meters. Um, and uh, I, have it, I have it up with the feed point up on uh, the tower, about 20 feet up. And I had to do that because I need this wire to be at least 14 feet off the ground. It goes across the RV park here, it goes across a couple of roads, and it has to clear incoming guests and in their RVs. Um, the ideal configuration, from all that I've been reading and from comments uh, from other people that use the antenna, is to have the feed point where the 49 to 1 is as close to the ground as possible. And if possible, have a, a ground rod at that feed point and have it grounded. And then, then that is supposed to um, do a great job as far as eliminating RF on the coax. I can't test that here. Logistically, I don't have a way to put the antenna as a sloper with the feed point near the ground. I'm in the middle of a, of a busy and um, packed RV park, so I don't have a lot of options to play with antennas. Uh, that's why I have to have my feed point up on the tower. And because of that, um, I get RF on the coax. Uh, there's nowhere else for the current to, uh, to balance to, you know. By the way, I did scan the antenna with the VNA after removing the ladder line. And uh, here's a shot of the 80 meter scan. And as you can see, it's very broad banded. Um, I don't know if this is a common thing to see on these antennas. I don't know if they are in general that broadbanded. If we look at the scan, we can see that the SWR is very low all across the entire 75 and 80 meter band, which is kind of what I was trying to achieve with the uh, fan dipole experiment, which I'm still gonna play with as well. So very, very broadbanded. Um, I, I wonder if that's because I have the feed point so far up off the ground. It's 20 feet off the ground, it's going to a 
at the other end of the antenna to a tree that's probably 25 feet off the ground. So uh, I, I don't know if that's why it's broadbanded or if it's just a characteristic of the antenna. Uh, by the way, here's a 40 meter uh, scan and uh, the yellow line uh, in both of these is the SWR curve frequency across the bottom of the screen. And uh, as you can see, again, it's, it's a pretty broad little antenna. And when I get out in the desert, um, I'll probably have a better opportunity to make it more of a sloper. The trees aren't very tall, so it won't be like that. It'll be like that. <laughs> It'll be rather close to the ground and probably more envis. But I'll have more opportunity to play around with it further and uh, experiment with uh, grounding and all that and see, you know, I'll, I might even do another video on that when I when I can actually have some real world data on how much of a reduction that produces in RF on the coax. So it's an ongoing experiment. But I just wanted to update you on that um, on that experiment. Um, it's a flop. Uh, we learned stuff, you know, so it's not a complete failure, but it did not work the way that I hoped it worked. And I just wanted to get that out there. So on we go. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.